Hey everybody, this is Mike, and today we're looking at one of my most anticipated games for 2019 into 2020, Dice Throne Adventures. If you're not familiar, this is a solo and co-op variant for Dice Throne, which is a competitive dueling game that's been out for a while. It's one of my favorite dueling games, especially to play with my six-year-old son, so I've been super excited to see how it plays cooperatively. The basic idea of the co-op mode is our heroes are going to start over here on the Crimson Sands, and we're going to have to progress through these tiles, taking whichever path we choose, until we get over here, and one of these three three-level tiles is going to have the boss we have to defeat to progress to the next level in the campaign. The setup, by the way, was determined by this level one setup card, and you'll see it told me to place chess on certain tiles at certain levels, and basically gave me everything I needed. By the way, a big thanks to our Patreon patrons. Uh, they selected the two characters I'll be controlling for this playthrough. The Shadow Thief, my son's favorite, and the Seraph, uh, one that I had not played that often before. Once you set up the board, you're going to set up your characters. Here's the Shadow Thief. A few things for people who haven't played Dice Throne before. First, we've got our health. So we're going to start at 25 health for a two-player game. This is all coming from the scenario setup, by the way. We're going to start with two combat points, which are used to play the cards in your hand. And finally, we're going to start with a hand of four cards. And additionally, we each have a salve token, which is a healing token that we can use uh, either during the quest or when we find the boss for greater effect. And to show you what a card looks like, they each have the CP cost over here and then when they can be played. Blue cards, which the Shadow Thief doesn't have any of, are played during the main phase at the beginning or end of your combat turn. Orange cards are played while someone is rolling, usually you, but some can affect an opponent or another player. And finally, red cards are instant that can be pretty much played whenever you want. I also have the Seraph over here with the same basic setup. Now, she does have a blue main phase card just to show you what it looks like. She also has an upgrade card, which is again played during your main phase, but it goes onto your board because uh, each player's board has these spots with different combinations of uh, dice rolls you can get. And the upgrades go right over those spots and improve the way those uh, particular rolls work. And one more small piece of setup, we give the boss the indicated number of combat points, which is 10. Even though we don't see the boss until the end, as we explore, we're going to be adding combat points. And he's going to use those to uh, potentially totally crush us when we finally find him. But well, that's it for the preliminaries and setting up the game. It's very quick. Let's go into actually playing. So first we determine who the first player is. We'll go ahead and roll for the Shadow Thief, a 5, and for the Seraph, a 16. So the Seraph will go first. Now the tile play of the game is played out in little adventure turns, and what you do on your turn is you have to move either to an enemy that's on the board and help fight them, basically like the Seraph could come in and help the Shadow Thief fight, or you have to move to an unrevealed tile, flip it, and resolve all the effects on it. Now, once you have tiles revealed, you can move through any number of revealed tiles, but you have to always end your turn on an unrevealed tile, usually starting a combat. Once you get to combat, you basically play Dice Throne, which I'll show you once we get into a fight, but uh, the adventure phase is really that simple. So the Seraph doesn't have many options here. She's going to go to the first tile. This is the Everblades. So uh, over here would be things that we would gain. Sometimes they'll give us CP or gold to upgrade later. Most tiles will give the boss some CP, so here they roll up to 11. And finally, many cards will give you some special text down here. So the Everblades, we can spawn a level 1 monster, or we can spawn a level 2 monster and gain one treasure roll. Uh, in this case, I think I'll start easy to show off how combat works. So let's spawn a level 1 on the Seraph. So here's the enemy I drew. Let's talk about some of the key characteristics. Up here is their level. In the demo I have, they go from 1 to 3, but uh, they could go up to 4 in the full game. He has 15 health and 1 CP, 1 combat point, that usually won't matter for enemies, but if I do things that make them spend combat points, it could become relevant. Then here's their reward. It's going to usually match their level. And then, very important, their AI roll objective. I'm going to be trying to roll two whites, two yellows, and one red result, which basically means every time I attack with them, I'm going to keep dice that match that and uh, re-roll dice that don't. Here are the results of their attacks they might get based on how many icons they got, dealing four, five, or six damage in this case. And then finally, what they can do when I attack them. How many dice they roll, and what effect those dice might have on me. So getting into a regular turn of Dice Throne. First, you have your upkeep phase, in case anything happens there. We don't have anything yet. Then you have your income phase, where you gain one combat point, and you draw one new card. In this case, I got a really nice luck mitigation one. Same Z's cost one CP to change one of my dice to the same value as another die. Next, I go into my main phase, and I can play any blue cards or upgrades. I can also sell any card I don't like for one combat point to pay for something else. 
So here, this is a defensive upgrade. I'm going to roll one die, and based on what I roll, I'll defend differently against the enemy. So I'm going to start off by playing this for two CP, and again, I cover up my current defensive spot right there. I think that's where I'll stop. I have some modifiers if I want to use them. So then we get into our offensive roll step. Basically, I'm going to roll these five dice. It's very Yahtzee-ish or King of Tokyo, if you're familiar with those games. And I'm going to keep whatever results I want. I can re-roll again, and I can re-roll a third time. So I get three rolls to get the best results I can. So my first roll. Oh, great. So I got a three, four, five, six. This is a small straight, which uh, we'll zoom in if I end up doing it over here. I've got one dive that doesn't match. So I can re-roll that to try to either get a two and make it into a large straight with his stronger. Or I also matched up Holy Smite, another nice ability. So here's my second roll, got a five. And my third roll, got a one. So I did not get that two. So to zoom in a bit on my options, here's Triumphant. Again, a small straight. So one through four or two through five or three through six in my case. I could deal six damage and then I'd roll a die. On the little sword result, which is half the die faces, I would add one damage. On the wing, two damage. The cross, three damage. And my six result, the attack would become undefendable, which means I'd just do it to the guy and he wouldn't have a chance to respond. Alternatively, I've got Holy Smite. I'll roll four dice. I'll do two times the number of sword results I roll in undefendable damage. On a wing, I'll get a flight token. Cross, I'll get a cleanse token. And on the uh, little shield, I'll inflict blinding light, which makes it less likely that the enemy can hit me. Holy Smite is likely to do four undefendable damage. Whereas Triumphant is going to do six, maybe a bit more damage, but it probably won't be undefendable unless I get lucky. So I'm going to use Holy Smite and hope for a good mix of icons. And this is great. Okay, so I got four undefendable damage, a flight token. This is a token the Seraph uses to make attacks undefendable or potentially cancel all damage from an incoming attack, which is great. And finally, I'll also get a cleanse token. This lets me get rid of negative status effects. So a really nice one there. Now, normally the Seder would get a chance to defend, but because I used undefendable damage, he just goes down to 11 life out of 15. Now, he gets a chance to respond. Remember, he's looking for uh, two white sides, which is half the sides on the dice, two yellow, which is uh, the five and the four side, and one red, which is the six side. And he gets three rolls just like me. So I roll, and oh my gosh, okay. So normally I'd do a few more rolls, but he literally got the best possible result on the first roll. Not great for me. And looking at his card, I see that he will deal six damage with this attack. Now, because this was not undefendable damage, I do get to use my Angelic Mantle defense power. So on a sword, I deal three damage. On a wing, I get another flight token. And then I can prevent two or three damage on these other results. And here I get... Okay, so just a three damage back, but I take the full six damage. That brings me down from 25 to 19. And the satyr is now down to eight, so just about half dead. We come back to our little adventure map for the Shadow Thief's turn, and he can either run into the Everblades and try to help the Seraph fight by doing his own round of combat, or he can uh, run past to the next unrevealed tile and do that. But in this case, let's help out the Seraph and try to take care of that enemy together. So just like the Seraph, the Shadow Thief's gonna gain a combat point and draw a new card. Is a better D, giving a reroll on a defense ability. And to summarize his other cards, he's got Try Try Again, which lets uh, me or a teammate reroll up the two dice. Getting Paid just gives him two more combat points. Same Z's we already saw, but changes the die to match another one. And Wild Shadows is a great one. It costs four, so super expensive. But um, if I'm in Shadows, I can change two dice to whatever I want. Uh, shadows is this uh, defensive ability the Shadow Thief can gain. Otherwise, I can change a single die. So it's a really expensive Wild ability but it does mean the Shadow Thief has more wild mitigation than most characters because most characters just have a one wild and a two wild card in their entire deck. All right, so if the Shadow Thief can do eight damage, we'll just finish this guy straight off. I got a lot of gold icons, which could be used to pickpocket some extra combat points, but that's not gonna actually damage the guy. I'm partway to gaining a straight, which would give me uh, three combat points and then deal my combat points as damage, but that would only do six. What I really love is a dagger strike with five hits. That would just deal eight damage straight up, but I didn't get a single one. For now, I guess I'll go for the straight and see how things work out. Oh, I got another six, actually. So I could go for one more six and get a shadow dance. Wouldn't do a ton of damage, but would give me shadows so I couldn't be hurt by the satyr in return and a sneak attack to deal more damage later. 
So let's try for that. Three dice, hoping for that six. Oh, and I got it. Awesome. So here's Shadow Dance. I'm going to roll one die and deal that half that much damage as pure damage. Basically, can't be defended, can't be modified. And then I'll gain two of my main icons. Shadows means I can't be hurt both this turn and then into the entire enemy turn and through my next turn. And Sneak Attack, I can discard to deal 1d6 extra damage when I'm hitting somebody. And as for that Shadow Dance damage, oh, awesome. So half that is three more damage to the Seder. This again, can't be defended against, so down to five. And I didn't mention before, but you do get a second main phase after you've done all your rolling if you want to uh, play some more cards or sell some more, but I don't need to here. All right, the Seder I would roll for against the Shadow Thief, but because uh, none of his effects will do anything except deal damage and the Shadow Thief has shadows and can't be hurt, we'll just skip that. Okay, we don't need to go back to the adventuring map because they're both in combat, so the Seraph's just going to keep on fighting. She'll gain a combat point and flip a card. Try, try again. Another one that lets us re-roll up to two dice. So all she has to do at this point is deal five damage and the enemy will be gone. Hmm, two sixes to start. Two more of those and I'll do a really powerful attack. Well, let's take the chance and go for it. Second roll. Oh, there's a third one. I just need one more. And I am safe because samesies will ensure I get that fourth six to do uh, my highest power ability up here if I need it. So let's see if I get lucky. Ah, no. So I will go ahead and play my samesies and spend one combat point. And I get some fun stuff here. I get another flight token. I can have up to three. Here's the real reason I wanted to get this early. I get my holy presence token. I can have two of these in the game. And this is going to do one damage to whichever enemy I'm facing at the beginning of every one of my turns. So as long as nobody discards it from me, I will have this forever. So that's great in the campaign mode. And finally, it won't matter, but I'm going to put Blinding Light on the Seder. If he wasn't dead, this would give him a chance to deal no damage or only half damage when he attacks me. But uh, here it's just going to not matter because he's taking eight damage and cannot stop it. So the eight damage will finish him off. But note that this time he does get a defense roll because it was an unblockable damage. He's rolling a... Uh, Let's see, it says two dice, but three dice. I'm not sure which. And if he gets a yellow, he knocks me down. So let's go with the three dice, and he did miss. Awesome. So he doesn't hurt me at all, and he is defeated. Now, when you defeat an enemy, you get to roll on the treasure chart, which you'll see in a second. And every player gets to do this, not just the one who defeated the enemy. So here's our little loot table. We're looking at the row for a one-level enemy. The rewards get better as you go down. And the Seraph will get... 13, so she's going to get one gold for the group. This, like treasure, is kind of a shared resource, so at the end of the mission, we would all get one gold to upgrade with. And the Shadow Thief will get an A to to draw one card. In this case, oh, it's a nice one. Not this time for one CP. can stop six damage incoming. Could be good for the Seraph, who's already injured. Okay, the Shadow Thief is up. It's going to go over here and find a Mirage. The boss's CP goes up one. Brings it to 12. And it says, roll one die. On a one to two, I gain concussion. On a three and four, I fight a level one. On a five or six, I gain one CP. Come on, thief. Ignore that mirage. Ah, so he gains concussion. This is not too terrible of a condition. He's going to skip his income phase at the start of the next battle he's in. And this will hang out until he actually fights a battle. That means he won't get a new card, won't gain a CP. But then it goes away. So that's the only effect it'll have. All right, with no enemy fought, the Seraph can go next. And I guess I'd rather go to this too, since that gives me the option of which way to go. We get a Poison Bog. She's going to gain two CP. We're going to gain two gold as a group. Going to fight a level two enemy. Oh my gosh, and gain two poison. That's a really bad status effect because it deals one damage every turn and does not go away unless you play a card to get rid of it. So her CP counts up to three, and the gold also counts up to three. She draws a crushing golem with 15 health, geez. And he's pretty straightforward. He's going to deal a variable amount of damage each turn, and then he just prevents a lot of damage when he gets attacked. So he can't do anything nasty to us, though, when he uh, gets hit. Now, the Seraph can use this cleanse token to get rid of a status effect at any time. So before the upkeep phase starts and she gets poisoned, she's going to get rid of one of these with her cleanse. But she still takes damage from the other poison token, going down to 18. But the golem is affected by her holy presence, and he goes down to 14. With that out of the way, we go into our income step. She goes up to 4 CP and draws another knot this time to prevent 6 damage. Let's see what she can get. I'd love to get a cleanse token. Hmm. So she got a 4 and 5 for a potential straight. A holy smite, she only needs a 6. I'd love her to get Purify, which would heal four from her and also remove a status token, getting rid of that poison, but I need uh, two results that are tough to get. I do have a Glorious already. That would give her another Flight token and deal six damage. Not too bad. 
But now I'm really liking the look of that Purify. Let's see if we can get lucky. Okay, I got the six, but I don't have the five. My Shadow Thief does have a Z, so we can get the five if we need it, but, uh, well, let's try for it. Okay, another six. Maybe I should have gone for another higher power instead. Oh, no, I should have read better. Z only works on your own dice, not on an ally's dice. Darn. All right, so to try to salvage this turn, I'm going to spend a try-try again for one CP and reroll up the two dice. I guess I'll go for these. Come on, give me some luck. All right, so the reason I rolled those is because I was uh, hoping I could pull out a Holy Smite if the uh, Purify didn't work. So this, again, is rolling four dice and doing some different effects on them. I'd love to get a cross. And yes, I did. Awesome. So I get a cleanse for the cross. I get a one flight no matter how many wings I rolled. I am at my max now, so I want to spend some of those. I put blinding light on the golem, which might stop him from hurting me, so that's nice. But then I didn't actually deal any damage. Uh, a little unfortunate there, but I will uh, get rid of that poison with my cleanse, so feeling good at least there. All right, the golem does not get to roll if he didn't actually get to damage. We'll just go straight to his turn. He's trying to get three yellows. And, God, I'm just rolling really well for the enemies, aren't I? So he rolls two dice, adds them together to deal that much damage. If he rolls less than four, he also inflicts concussion on me. All right, so he's got nine damage. Now, that's the end of his uh, turn. So we're going to roll a die. On a one, he does no damage. The blinding light gets him fully. On a two or three, he does half damage. Oh, awesome. So he didn't actually hurt me at all. Hooray for blinding light. All right, we have the Shadow Thief next. He could help out here, but he's still got his Shadows token on since he didn't take a turn after gaining it, which uh, means if I'm very lucky, I'll get a first strike enemy who attacks before I attack, and that would uh, stop their first round of damage completely. So I'm going to have him try to get a new enemy. He can go here, which is a more direct path, but over here he's going to get a free roll on the treasure table and uh, also still fight the same level one enemy. So let's try that. So first we roll for the treasure. This time it's only the Shadow Thief, and he gets a seven, so gains two combat points. Good for him. Brings him up to five. And now we reveal the actual tile. The Stained Spire. So it's plus three combat points for the boss. That's not great, but we gain a gold. That brings the boss up to 15 and us up to four. And then here I've got a choice. I could take two damage to reveal this adjacent tile, but I'm not too worried about facing another level one enemy, so I think he'll just stay for now. That takes us back to the Seraph and her fight with the Golem. She goes up to four combat points. And draws a bub bye for two CP. She can remove a status token from a player, and this is an instant action, so she can do it whenever she wants. So let's not play anything for now, and let's see what kind of damage we can do. And before I forget, she does one damage to the Golem with her Holy Presence. All right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so last time I was looking for that Purify, and this time... Hmm. Yeah, so I mean, if I can get a six, that'll deal five undefendable damage, or I can heal four. And the damage sounds pretty good, so let's go for that six. Ah, darn. Okay, maybe I should go for the straight instead. Three, four, five. Uh, yeah, so I just need a two or a six to at least get a small straight. Okay, and I got the two. Awesome. So I showed you this one before, but I'm dealing six damage, and then I'm going to roll a single die and either make it undefendable or add some more. So here, oh, great. So plus three is nine damage. Now I could discard one of these flight tokens to uh, try to make it undefendable. How that works is I roll two dice, and if either one is a six, then the attack becomes undefendable. That's also the way I prevent all incoming damage with one. But the worst he can do is just block some defense, so I don't know if I need this to be undefendable. So nine damage incoming. He rolls five dice, prevents one damage for each yellow. And I hate my rolling. So he takes six, he's down to seven. And then he's coming after me. Okay, so no yellows the first roll, like that. Second roll is two yellows, he needs one more. I oh my gosh, okay. So again, two dice worth of damage. Ah, nine again. So there's no blinding light this time. I think I'm gonna try to fly away from the damage and prevent it. And before I do that, though, I can still roll for my defense. So let's see what I get. Oh, three more damage to him. Brings him down to four. And now, yeah, I think I'm going to try to fly away from the damage. So for each of these, I need a six on two dice to prevent the nine damage incoming. That's not it. I can do it multiple times. Come on. Ah, good. Great. So the second one prevented it. I still have one flight token left. All right, Shadow Thief is still looking for somebody to use his shadow on. Hopefully someone with first strike. So let's go ahead and move up here. 
All right, Mountain of Salt. The boss gains one CP, brings his total to 16. Okay, and the Shadow Thief can either fight a one or roll a die, and on a one to three, spawn a two, on a four to six, gain two gold. Well, the Thief seems like the kind of person who's gonna try to steal some better stuff for himself. Ah, no, we're fighting a level two. All right, and things sort of worked out the way I wanted. We got a Corrupted Rogue who is going to strike first, which means I can't take any damage the first turn. But she's also super tough. She has 14 life. She's going to start with five combat points. But then every turn, she's going to gain two more, and that's going to affect how much damage she does. She's going to deal more and more damage as she goes. So as I said, she attacks first. She's looking for straights. And she got a four, five, six right off the bat. Second roll. Same thing. Third roll. All right, so this is unfortunate for me. I wanted her to actually hit and then deal no damage because now if she fails her offensive roll, she's going to get sneak attack for next turn. And this is the same as mine. And she's basically a dark version of myself, so that'll let her deal uh, 1d6 extra damage when she attacks. All right, so here's the Shadow Thief. The concussion goes away, but I will not get to draw a card or gain a CP this turn. Now, I'm still in shadows, which means even uh, the rogue's counterattack won't be able to hurt me. And don't forget, I've got the card Wild Shadow and also Samesies, so I could theoretically change uh, three dice into sixes and, like, really try to get my super attack. It might be worth it to not get uh, destroyed by this person, but let's see how I do. I'm not going to play any cards yet. Okay, so first... Oh, man, this is a great start. There's two, so you need five sixes to do your ultimate attack, which maybe you'll see in a second. Second roll. Oh my gosh, yes, yes, yes. Third roll, I'd love to get one more and not have to use Wild Shadow yet. Oh my gosh, all right. So here we go, samesies for one combat point. Brings me down to four, and that changes this into a six, woohoo! And I'm gonna use Getting Paid, which is an instant, so I can use it whenever I like, because uh, as you're about to see, my ultimate is gonna deal damage based on my combat point, so might as well increase it. All right, so zooming in on this ridiculousness, first of all, ultimates can't be blocked and nothing can affect them. Like if I was playing the Seraph, she couldn't try to fly away from it. So I gain three combat points. That brings me to nine. Then I deal combat points plus five in damage. That's 14, which just to remind you is going to straight up murder this rogue in one shot. Then I'll gain shadows again, because it would have gone away at the end of this turn. It goes away if you have it for a full combat turn, but this will be around for my next combat potentially. I do unfortunately remove all other status effects. Now, uh, my salve is not affected by that, but I do lose my backstab, so I can't use that on somebody else. But yeah, I went up to uh, 9 CP and completely destroyed that rogue. Feeling great. Remember, whenever an enemy is defeated, both players get to roll for it. So we're on the two row this time. The Shadow Thief gets a oh, one. So there's a plus one damage token. Can be used to modify an attack later on. And my Seraph... Gets a 10, which is, oh, awesome, heal three. And she's the one who was actually injured. That brings her up to 21. Went the long way around there. All right, speaking of the Seraph, she's still battling the Golem. He goes down to three from her Holy Presence. So she just needs to deal three damage to finish him off, although he has the potential to block as much as five of any damage she sends his way. She gets another card, and this hasn't come up yet, but you can only have uh, six cards at the end of your turn. Which uh, Double Up would certainly run afoul of. That's drawing two cards for one CP. She's up to five. And let's try to blast this guy away. All right, so I got a three, four, five for a good Holy Smite or a straight. Let's stick with that for now. Oh, awesome. We got a six. I definitely got the Holy Smite or Triumphant. Let's try to get the two and get the best one. Ah, no, okay. I could do the Holy Smite, and if I get at least two swords out of four dice, I would deal four damage and finish this guy off. But the Triumphant should also do enough damage and definitely do it. So, yeah, let's do the Triumphant. And I add just one damage. That's seven going towards him. As long as he doesn't block literally all five of it, he is finished. So, yeah, he's got seven damage. He's only got three life left. He just needs to not roll five yellows. And he tried his best, but no, he is also defeated. And it's loot again, loot all the time. The Seraph gets a nine. Oh, two more health, this is great. So we're not getting a lot of gold for upgrading, but at least she's not too hurt. And for the Shadow Thief, 17, ah, there we go, three gold. So that's good, nice little mix of rewards there. All right, so to give you a quick kind of a scope of our progress so far, I think the Seraph's gonna go around. I don't really wanna fight more threes than I need to, even though there's a three chest there. 
So if she goes around with the Shadow Thief, again, uh, after here, any of these three spots could be the boss. But the Seraph just finished her turn. Time for the Shadow Thief, who's still in shadows. And let's see, plus one CP to him and plus one to the boss. Brings the boss to 17 and him to 10. The max is 15, by the way, which can easily happen with the Shadow Thief. And let's see, we gain a one treasure, or you can roll on a one to three, he gains nothing, on a four to six, he gains a two treasure. That didn't work out too well last time, so let's stick with the free one. So it's just the Shadow Thief, and he gets an eight, which is a uh, one free card draw. He draws Poison Wound. For two CP, he can put a poison on someone, and again, that's one damage at the beginning of every turn. Pretty cool. And who do I have the pleasure of tangling with now? Oh, yes! <laughs> this is crazy good luck. Um, a Dark Panther who is going to first strike me. Usually that's a negative, but here, because I'm in shadows, he's just going to be, like, prowling around, and I'm secretly stalking him. Ha ha ha. Now, the Dark Panther still gets to roll, because if he gets four of a kind on his uh, white results, then he can do a bleed effect, which would still happen. The shadow does not prevent a status effect. So let's see, he's got one, one, two, three, two. Okay, so he got uh, several pairs, but no four of a kind, so he does not hurt me at all. The Shadow Thief gets an income phase this time, goes to 11, draws a sixth card. Six it, change any die to a six, and he's still got Wild Shadow that uh, would let him change two dice. Clearly I'm not going to waste a lot of cards fighting this easy little panther, but it's nice to know I have him. All right, so... Ooh, five uh, daggers would deal eight damage all by itself. And uh, the Panther's defense won't prevent any damage, but uh, it can only bleed me. So, yeah, let's try to get uh, two more of those. Come on. Ah, darn. So now I'm conflicted because one, two, three, I'm only one away from a four for a small straight. Yeah, let's try for that. Give me that four. Ah, all right, well, I did still get a dagger, so I'm going to do some damage. My dagger strike does four damage with uh, three daggers, and if I got at least one bag, I also gain a CP. That'll take me to uh, 12. And the panther's going to try to bleed me, which he does not. He needed a uh, claw symbol. So he's down to four, but sadly that means I'm going to have to give him another chance to hit me next turn, and my shadows is going away, so a little unfortunate there. All right, no reason to think the shadow thief needs my help with that simple guy, so let's go to this next level one. Okay, Ivory Woods. We're going to gain one gold. Boss will gain one CP. Fight a level one monster. We're getting both a positive and negative stat. Backstride is good for us, and Wither is pretty bad. It stays on us and is minus one damage every turn. The boss is at 18, and we are at eight gold. And we are facing a fun enemy, and by fun I mean not at all. He's got 13 life, and he's trying to roll four whites and then a six. Now, the thing is, this is a very specific result, and he does nothing if he doesn't roll that, but if he does roll that, he does a lot of damage. Four plus a die roll, uh, which is more than most level ones deal. And then in defense, he rolls a single die. Pretty good chance to either deal two damage back to me or heal himself. Right, so if Seraph has a backstrike, that'll let her deal damage to the Cyclops when he hits her. But first, let's go up to six CP and draw a card. Triple up, draw three cards. Wow. So let's see, she's got too many cards, so I think she's going to play Bye bye which is a 2 CP to play. I'll bring her to 4, and that'll remove her Wither, so she's not getting minus damage each turn. The rest are a card draw and modifiers, so I don't think we need to use those. Okay, let's get this guy. Oh wow, 3, 4, 5, 6, right off the bat, so we got the Holy Smite. Let's try to get the 2 and finally get an Archangel's Will. I haven't rolled that yet. That's a one, and another one, okay. See, I think I'd rather do the Holy Smite and potentially uh, do some undefendable damage. Which I did. Okay, so, oh, I guess I didn't need to use the card. I just got a cleanse, and then I did a four undefendable damage to the Cyclops. That brings him down. Oh, I should have taken off one at the beginning of the turn, so he actually would have been down to 12, and now down to eight. He comes back with his attack. First roll. That's not good. He already got the red, which was the harder thing to get. So now he's just looking for uh, two more whites. And he got him. Darn. So that's a four damage plus a roll. Two more for six damage total. Before I do anything else, I can use my angelic mantle. And that'll deal three damage to him. So he's down to five. And this seems like a perfect time to use my not this time. So for one CP, I'll stop all six of the damage incoming. Brings her down to three. Now, I do have the back strike, but uh, first of all, I'm not sure if I can use it if I didn't actually take damage. And also, he's only got five life left. 
Uh, this is going to take it down to four, so I think I can just uh, finish him off pretty easily next turn on my own. All right, coming over to the Thief. The Panther's going to get to actually hit us this time. It's got two, three... Okay, only three. So only uh, four damage incoming. Thief has been a ghost so far, but now you actually have to see his uh, defenses. So he can choose one of two, kind of a unique thing for him. He can do shadow defense, rolling four dice. He can poison them with uh, two daggers. With a single six, he gains sneak attack. With two sixes, he gains sneak attack and cancels all the incoming damage, four in this case. Alternatively, he can roll five dice, uh, deal one times the number of daggers rolled, and poison if he got a dagger and a six. I'm not too worried about finishing off this panther, so I'm really just going to go for the shadow defense and hopefully block the damage. Or I will roll literally nothing useful. Well, I'm at six cards, so I'm probably going to have to discard next turn anyway. Let's go ahead and use better D and re-roll up to five defense dice. Okay, that's better. I get sneak attack at least for later use. But I do actually take some damage. Sad for the uh, Shadow Thief. Coming into his turn, though, he'll draw a six card. Ah, an upgrade. Yeah, so his uh, straight would give him four CP instead of three. And then uh, some upgrades do this. He actually gets an alternative die roll. So if he gets like a whole mix of stuff, he gets one CP, gains sneak attack, draws a card, and inflicts poison. Well, no reason really not to play this because I'm up to 13 <laughs> combat points, so... Let's uh, put that down and go down to 11. And here we go. I got to do uh, four damage. That will be enough to finish this guy off. Hmm. Interesting mix there. Let's make it simple, I think, and stick with the daggers for now. Oh, wow. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> okay. So we're doing an Insidious Strike, gaining four CP. That puts us at the max. And then dealing 15 damage. Total overkill for no good reason. Now, sadly, the panther has a chance to bleed us, and he does not. Awesome. Coming to our handy-dandy loot table, the Shadow Thief will gain 10, healing 2. And the Seraph, 13, giving us 1 gold, up to 9. That gives the Shadow Thief 23 health, by the way. Back to our Seraph versus the Cyclops. He's down to 4 health automatically. Draw a 6 card. Smote! <laughs> like, I guess that's the past tense of smite. Uh, roll five, uh, plus swords to the damage and blinding light on a six. So that's again an attack modifier when I'm already doing an attack to somebody. Kind of points up to four. Let's see if we can finish this guy off and maybe get some uh, modifier while we're at it. We've definitely already got enough to kill him from that. So yeah, let's try to just keep those. And if I can get a wing, I can do glorious and gain a... Uh... Okay, I didn't get it there. Yeah, let's still try for it. Ah, awesome. So Glorious is uh, six damage, more than enough, and I gain a flight token to join the one I already have. Cyclops is going to roll one die. If he gets a uh, one, two, or three, he'll deal one damage. Hopefully not. If he gets a uh, four or five, he'll heal himself, which I don't care about because I'm dealing six. Darn, he did uh, do two damage to me, but I got him otherwise. And some loot, 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 Seraph. Oh, gosh, a natural 20. Cool. So I've actually shown you this yet, but you'll see these little question mark cards over here. So at the end of the mission, I can purchase this unidentified card for five gold, whereas normally to get a rare card, I'd have to spend 15. But I won't know what it is. I'll just have to take it blind. As for the Shadow Thief, a four. That's a plus two damage token. Now, the stack limit for these is two, so he's going to have to spend one of these soon in case he rolls another one. All right, we're getting pretty close to where the boss is. Shadow Thief is going to go through our last level one, then we'll get into much more challenging enemies. An alley seems appropriate for him. A uh, plus one CP to the Shadow Thief, which actually is nothing because he's at max 15. The boss gains one, and I have to discard a card of my choice. Hmm. The weakest one is try, try again, rerolling two dice. I want to save the poison for the boss and just get one damage per turn on him right away. Preventing six damage is great. And then uh, these things that let me get sixes and do a super attack are, of course, super useful. And here's the last level one enemy we should see in this playthrough. Chaos Elf. 13 health, pretty high. And he's going for straights. Uh, six damage, seven damage on a uh, long straight. And, oh, four dice on a two yellow prevents half the damage, so he could last a while. So the thief can't gain any more CP, but still gets a card. Card trick. Opponent discards one card, which sadly doesn't do anything in the co-op mode, but additionally draw two cards if in shadows or one card otherwise. So not a great card for two CP. Might just sell it if I need to. 
Let's just go straight in. I could do a ton of extra damage between my backstab and my plus one and plus two. I'm not sure if I'll need to. So three knives, a six, and a four. Now the six with knives will actually poison the guy, so he'll take damage every turn. So maybe I'll leave that and just try to reroll this to get another knife. Nope. And... Oh, another six. Well, if I was crazy and wanted to spend all my money, I could make me have a... Uh, Five sixes again with all my cards, but let's not do that. So I'm dealing four damage and poisoning the elf. And this certainly doesn't seem worth uh, spending any of my tokens on. Elf needs to get two yellows to only take two damage. Does not, so takes the full four. And he's going to respond, again, looking for a straight. So you take anything that's in a straight, which is literally nothing here. So second roll. Um, okay, four, five, six. Uh-oh. And final roll... Awesome, did not get a straight, so nothing happens on his turn. Oh, I'm sorry, he did take a damage from the poison. Womp. I think the uh, Thief is a better leadoff fighter in these tough fights, because if he gets lucky, he can do like 15 damage in one turn. So let's have her join him on the Chaos Elf. And she's up to 5 CP, gonna go up to a 7th card, so I have to do something with it. 6, I definitely want to keep that. So let's see, I think I'll probably use either my Smote or my Angelic Combat. Angelic Combat, if I get lucky... Could give me a six and give me my second Holy Presence to do two damage at the start of every round. Speaking of, the Chaos Elf goes down to seven. And all I have to do is do six damage because then the Poison will finish him off at the start of his own turn. All right, so... Hmm. Got a six to start, but that's unlikely to do much for us. We could just stick with the uh, regular attack and then if we get lucky... I mean, six would be enough to kill him. So as long as he doesn't block half of it. Yes, let's try that. Maybe I'll go for another flight token. Okay, one more chance to get a wing. No. Okay, so I just did six damage, exactly what I need, if he doesn't block. So he does lose one at the start of his turn. He's rolling four dice. Don't want to see two yellows. And I did not, so he is defeated by my attack. Awesome. Some more loot for the Seraph. 11, that's one gold. And for the Shadow Thief, a five, that's one CP, which I can't use. But we do go up to 10 gold. There we go. All right, we're going into much more dangerous territory. First, a level two. So the Emerald Shoal. Okay, so a plus one CP for the hero. Doesn't help at all. Boss gets plus two. That brings him to 21. Gonna fight a level two, predictably. Remove all status effects from the active player. Oh man, this one hurts. Now, the uh, the solve is immune from this, but I do lose my backstab and both of my saved up damage. That was going to be some nice damage for the boss, potentially. Really just sad about that. But to be fair, it would have been worse for the Seraph to lose her uh, damage per turn and all that stuff, so I guess it worked out pretty well. All right, and who is my Huckleberry? Wither Elf. 14 life, going for straights. Can deal some pretty decent damage and also can prevent half damage. Darn all right, Wither Elf, if I can get one big straight, I can kill you in one go, unless you prevent half of it. All right, once again, I'm too rich for my own good, but I do get a card. A Helping Hand, this is a fun one. I can force the enemy to reroll one die, so like if they barely got this perfect result, I can mess it up. Speaking of perfect results, I would love a large straight to deal 15 damage. Two, three. That's part of a straight, but not a big part of it. Oh, man. Could go for a card to get the shank attack, but there's only a single side for that, so that's not great odds. Could try for two more sixes to get the shadow dance, but that's not too likely without using the cards I don't want to use up. Uh, I think the straight could still be the way to go. Let's see. Oh, or... Oh, man, this is the worst. So I can uh, pickpocket to gain a bunch of CP, and I could even uh, steal some of it from the enemy if I had a six, but... None of that is helping me here, so that was a dead turn. Very sad. Hopefully the Wither Elf will return the favor. Looking for a straight. Uh, three, four, five. That's a perfect way to start, though. Okay, the three and five. That's okay. Come on. Oh, no. Made it a large straight right at the end. So even my helping hand card has got one really help here because it would just make it a small straight instead. So this is going to do Wither and seven damage incoming. Now, I've got enough this time to cancel most of it, but let's uh, try to do shadow defense and maybe roll two sixes and cancel it that way. Or none. Now, I do poison her with uh, two swords, but I get nothing on the other results. 
So yeah, we'll go ahead and spend one CP, since I'll get it back in a second anyway. Prevent six of the damage and only take one. But I do have this uh, token taking away one of my damage every turn. Not great. I think the Seraph is going to come in and help out. We're at the six combat points. Gosh, got so many cards. Ooh, transference. Transfer one status effect from a chosen player to another chosen player. Let's uh, let's do that. That'll be four, but that'll move the Wither from the Shadow Thief to the uh, enemy and make them do less damage. And starting my turn, one damage dealt automatically. Here come my rolls. Here we go, six. One, two, three, four. Once again, I have a chance for a large straight. Let's go for that five. Second roll. <laughs> this is never going to work out, is it? Third roll. No, all right. So I've just got a small straight. So we're at six damage with a modifier. And oh, that means it's undefendable. Awesome. Maybe it's while it's undefendable I can use some modifiers. Yeah, let's try that. So uh, I'm rolling five dice. That's going to cost me one CP. And for every sword, I inflict an extra damage. And it all is undefendable since the initial damage is. Oh my gosh. Okay, so that's uh, that's 11 damage. It leaves this guy at two left. Oh man, he's going to get poisoned for one more, but he's still going to be alive. I could play Angelic Combat and have a 50% chance of killing him straight out. It wouldn't be too terrible if I got any of these other things either. Hmm. Yeah, let's try it. Cost me another combat point. Okay, roll a single die on a sword. He's going to be dead. On a six, I'd get my second Holy Presence. Ah, there we go. Okay, so he is defeated. Bam, so that was a bunch of damage, but I had to use several cards to make it happen. Okay, and our loot, the Seraph, is getting uh, two gold for us. The Thief, 17, three more, five gold total. Good for upgrades. All right, so here we go. Two more level threes, and then any of these could be the boss. So uh, Shadow Thief, let's see what you find. Oh, interesting. Actually, no enemy. I don't mind that. Although, wow, the boss gets five CP. Jeez. Okay. We get three gold, though. I like that. What's this ability? You may pay two CP to place one card from your discard pile into your hand. Really? Uh -huh. I don't know if the Shadow Thief can afford it. Heck yes, let's do that. Let's see, what's the best one? Not this time for six healing. Now, nah, same Z's makes me, yeah. Between same Z's, six it, and wild shadow, I could potentially have four automatic sixes to uh, get my superpower off. So, yes, let's uh, get the same Z's, definitely. Well, oddly enough, I thought he'd be starting the first fight, but it's actually the Seraph, although she's going to get to do a three loot roll first. All right. A one. <laughs> okay, so just a plus two damage token. Now, let's see what she's actually stumbled into. Oh, my gosh. This is really silly lucky. I think these are like the only level threes that don't have an enemy on them. Now the boss is getting crazy powerful. That's a uh, four more to bring him to 30. But I can pay one CP to heal three damage or three CP to heal all of us three. Now I wish I had it, but she only has a uh, two CP to play around with here. So she'll just heal herself for three, but I wish I could have done it for the thief too. And that brings her to 24. All right. Okay, so we've got a one in three chance of just bringing up the boss right away here. It means we get fewer rewards in the mission, but uh, we'd have more life probably because the level three guys are pretty tough. So, let's see what happens. Oh my gosh, okay. So, uh, I'm, I'm promising I did not edit this to cheat or anything. I just uh, happened to find the boss right away. Again, I'm not sure if that's good or bad for me. I gained three CP for the boss. And the Thief actually gains 3 CP as well. I wish the Seraph had been the one to get that. So I got two bosses in the demo. There are four in the full game. I'm going to be fighting the Fallen Gunslinger, who I hate and who usually kills me. So let's see how my luck goes this time. Now, fighting the boss is quite a bit more intense because, as you can see, he has his own board. And he has his own deck of cards. And how you start the boss battle is you take all of his upgrade cards. That's kind of like we get upgrades. And I can tell you right now he's going to have all his stuff upgraded because 33 is pretty high. I'm just going to go through the entire little pile of upgrades until he's either spent the 33 or can't upgrade anymore. How much health does he have, you might ask? Oh, just the little sum of 50. Uh, yeah. So we have a choice to make, by the way, right now. We could flee and then just play this mission again over after upgrading with our 18 gold. Or we can fight, but we're going to get half our gold, only nine, if we fail to defeat him. And again, so I'll have to replay. 
But you're here to see a playthrough, so let's uh, see what happens with this guy. So additionally, I haven't talked about the Sav tokens. They can be discarded to gain 1d6 health back. The special thing is if you spend them right when the boss is revealed, you can re-roll that die once to give you a better chance to get a higher value. Now, the Seraph has uh, 24 life and the Thief has 22, so I think I'm going to hold on to them and just hope for a good roll later once they're more hurt. But uh, again, I could do that if I wanted to. All right, so Thief's up first. Uh, he's got max CP already, and he gets an upgrade. Hmm. Shadow Strike actually looks pretty good. Deal half CP as damage and poison the guy. Yeah, so even though I don't want to use too much money, I think I will go ahead and do that one. But I'm going to sell Card Trick, my least useful card, in uh, co-op to go back up to 14. And I'm probably going to poison him, but it's an instant, so I can uh, like do my super attack, for example, and get all the damage from my CP before I play this. And speaking of, if I can get off my ultimate, I'll do 20 damage to him and just totally knock him down. And also put myself in shadows. And I've got enough cards to almost guarantee it, but I'd love to spend... Oh no, that's right, Wild Shadows is only going to do one right now. Well, that being said, uh, let's see what we can make happen. Oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. That's, uh, so already, yeah, if I spent everything, I could make it happen, but man, I'd love to save some of these cards. Second roll. Nothing. Ah, darn. Okay, come on. Third roll, third roll, third roll. Okay. I'll take that. So our Wild Shadow can do uh, two dice change when I'm in shadows, and I'm going to be in a second. So I'm just going to use the samesies and six it. It cost me a two CP total. So it brings me down to 12, and that'll change these into sixes and get my ultimate off. But wait, the gunslinger says, he has these four king's hand tokens, and he'll use them only in really specific circumstances. One of them being when I do an ultimate, he'll discard one, and he can only use one per turn, so he can't keep doing this. And if he rolls a five or a six, he uh, gets to make me re-roll one of those dice. So here he goes. Okay, no, so he just wasted it. Awesome. So, same as last time, my CP goes up 3, and then I deal this plus 5, 20 damage. So he is down to 30 in a moment. Take that. Then I'm going to go into Shadows, so he can't uh, hurt me back. And just for good measure, let's go ahead and give him some poison to think about. That costs me 2. And he will, uh... And he will be taking 1 damage at the start of every turn until he maybe gets rid of it. Now, how the boss turn works, again, he's got his own set of cards. I mean, but during his upkeep, he's going to go down to 29. But he's got his own set of cards, and he'll draw one at the start of each turn during his income phase. Ah, this is not great. So he spends two CP. So this uh, extra combat points, they do matter. That heals him five, and he's going to draw another card. So he's back up to 34. Haha, -ha, take that, Shadow Thief. Another card. Helping Wind. Okay, remove all positive status effects from the active player. Oh, my shadow is gone! That was the worst possible card that could have happened. It does cost him 2 CP, though. So he's down to 5. All right, and then uh, you will note that like they'll make sure you don't waste cards. So here it says, unless I had a positive status effect, it would not work. And then you also get the roll objective. So this is telling him, for this turn, he wants to roll five sixes. But uh, that changes from turn to turn as you draw different cards. I hope he does not roll five sixes. Oh my gosh, that's a bad start. Maybe he's going to respond with his own ultimate, please. No. Oh gosh, that was close. He does, however, get Coffin Hunter, which uh, is pretty terrible. Now this is kind of a perfect <laughs> time to use my helping hand and make him re-roll one of those so he gets a weaker ability. Well, actually, maybe I don't want to, because Saddle Up for three gets him three evasive tokens, which means he could just uh, evade my damage if he wants to. Huh. Okay, I guess I'll just tank the damage. Oh, this feels bad. So it says 10 undefendable damage and knockdown. Knockdown is pretty minor for the Shadow Thief. I have to spend a 2 CP or I would miss my entire roll turn, and he can certainly afford it. But here's the nasty thing about the Gunslinger. He has these little reload tokens, which he immediately uses, so I don't really have to show them to you. But basically it means he's going to roll uh, two dice and get half that much damage added on to his 10 damage, all undefendable. And if he rolls a 1 or a 2, he gets to re-roll at once. So, well, that was good for me. Re-roll them both. Oh, and not so good. So that is uh, 16 damage in one go that I cannot defend against. So I'm down to 6 life. Seems like a good time to use my solve now. Hopefully I will roll well. 6! Awesome. So... <laughs> 
Feeling pretty bad about how that turn eventually ended up. Gosh, losing that shadow was the worst possible thing, but I do have 12 health now. Hey, uh, Sarah, if you want to roll in here and help out. All right, sure she does. So uh, we're up to two combat points. Not enough. No divine intervention. Who gain holy presence? That would be another one. Inflict blinding light on the guy. That would be great. One player gains two flight. One player gains cleanse. Oh, this is really good. But four CP. Yeah, I mean, I definitely want to use this as soon as possible. But I wish it was less expensive. And well, I guess I'll I can sell this. To bring me up to three. I guess I'll triple up to bring me up to four. And then I can play this and go back down to nothing. So she's going to gain another Holy Presence. And by the way, he already went down to 33 from the one. He's not going to affect it by the other one until next turn. She'll put a Blinding Light on him so his attack might be canceled. Someone gains two Flight. Now she's already got two Flight, so she'll go and give that to the Shadow Thief. And then a Chosen Player gets cleansed. She's also going to give that to the Shadow Thief because she's already got one waiting for her. Okay, and then... I want to have my six hit available in case I roll super well, so I'm going to sell my better D and uh, be very poor in cards, although I could draw two more with double up at some point. All right, she has never rolled those crazy rolls like the thief. Let's see if we can change that here. Yes, I got four, five, six. And I've also I've already got Holy Smite, which would deal undefendable damage. But then most of the other stuff, like, I don't really need the flight. I don't really need the cleanse. Part of me just wants to roll for sixes and go crazy, but I only have a single card to help me out with that. Actually, I guess Wild Shadow can be played on me for a single six, so I could get two more sixes. Oh, man. Okay, let's go crazy. <laughs> I'm going to regret this, I'm sure. Or ooh, maybe I won't regret it. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I can definitely, with uh, playing all the cards, get an ultimate here. But let's see if we can again save a few. No. All right, so going to give the guy a chance to mess with us again. There goes my only combat point to change one of them into a six. And the thief is changing the value of any die by going down to nine to uh, make the other one a six. The gunslinger is spending one of his king's hand. He's only got two left. Please don't be a five or a six. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's kind of terrifying. So I gain flight. That brings me to my max. Oh, you know what I just realized? I should have given the Thief the Holy Presence, because then when I get this, I get another one. So let's say I did that, because if I was smart, I would have. So that gives her the extra Holy Presence. I don't actually have a token for that, so let's go ahead and do that. Now, if I'm limited to the number of tokens actually in the game, then <laughs> you can tell me I did that wrong. And then I get this uh, special one, Blessing of Divinity. This literally means that if I die, I uh, don't die. <laughs> I come back to life with one life, so it's a nice little thing. Then I'm dealing 13 unblockable damage. Let's certainly spend this while it can't be defended against and make it 15. All right, so he is down to 18 life, but he's poisoned, and we have a Holy Presence all over the place dealing extra damage, so I'm feeling really good here. I might not want to feel too good because he's going to respond with Royal Influence. Spend three to gain a king's hand. He's back up to three, although I don't think I'm going to be doing too many ultimates anymore anyway. And by the way, he's trying to get straight. That does bring him down to 2 CP, so he might finally not be able to play some of those cards. He takes 1 damage from the poison. Alright, trying to get a straight. That doesn't look good. 1, 2, 3, 4 to start out. And... okay. So he rolled a small straight. Uh, you and the active player each roll 1 die. If you roll equal or greater, deal 11 damage, otherwise deal 7. No good option there. So here we go. Ah, so 11 damage coming at me. And not just 11 damage, because don't forget about his reload tokens. Oh gosh, uh, so that's 14, 17 damage. But wait, he's got blinding light on a 1, he does nothing. On a 2 or a 3, he does half. So 17 damage in half, uh, and you take away, round it up. So 8 damage coming at me now. But the blinding light is gone. Okay, I can roll my defense before I decide if I want to use any flight tokens. So that gives me a flight token. I'm not sure if I can immediately spend it before. Let's say I can. So let's say I spend one and then get it right back. Okay, so uh, number six prevents the damage. Nope. So I'll spend one more and then I might stop there. Um, okay, so yeah, I'll just take the eight damage for now, I think. 16 and save the rest of my flight tokens for more damage. I will use my back strike I've been saving, so I do a half a die roll of damage. <laughs> okay, so one. So 
He's down to 16. That's better than nothing. All right, coming over to my Shadow Thief, who is remarkably poor for how he usually is. All he's got is a helping hand and Shadow Defense. I don't think I can afford that. Let's just sell it and get my damage up higher, potentially. All right, so he will uh, cleanse away his knockdown so he can uh, not have to spend two CP on that. Thanks to his presence, the Gunslinger's down to 15. All right, and he's got some flying tokens himself. Let's see if we can roll some nice stuff here. Hmm. Two, three, or five, six. A straight would certainly do the most damage. Well, I do have a six, but now I don't have uh, enough stuff. So let's, yeah, let's keep the two, three. And try to get a one or a four. Hmm. Ah, this is not good. Maybe I just keep the daggers and try to get some basic damage. Yeah, let's play it safe here. Okay. So... Oh man, it's only four damage coming at him. I do gain a CP, though. Not nearly as good of a turn as I had before. So his defense is he does three damage to me. That's not great. And then we each roll a die, and if he rolls higher or equal, he takes half damage. And it's only four damage, so I don't care that much, but... Ah, he equaled, so he does only take two now. Brings him to 13, which is certainly something. And now coming back to him, he's poisoned to 12. Man, I mean, I just hope those poison and stuff could be what finishes him off, potentially. What's his card for the turn? Okay, reload. Okay, so when you spend a reload, if the outcome is one to two, you roll that die one time. I don't think he has to pay for this unless this actually happens. And he already gets a free reroll anyway, so I think he'd have to, like, reroll one to two twice in a row. So he'll probably just sell this for one CP. But he's going for three yellows and a red. He gets, he's got two yellows and a red. And okay. So this becomes Magic Bullet. So he's going to deal seven damage and then roll one to deal some extra fun stuff. So four more damage. So he's dealing 11 damage. Plus, don't forget about our friendly gun. Okay, so that's uh, 11, 13, 15 damage. Does not need this, so he's up to three CP. All right, 15 damage is more than I can handle. I've got my flight tokens that I got from the Seraph, but let's do shadow defense. If I manage to somehow roll two sixes, then uh, I won't take any damage at all. Nope. And in fact, I didn't accomplish anything with that. All right, so I've only got uh, two chances to not be dead. Uh, I need a five or I need a six on two dice. There's the first one. Oh, yes, <laughs> okay. Thank you, Sarah, for giving my uh, thief some wings. So I take no damage. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Okay, speaking of my Seraph saving the day, it is the Plinking of Death. He's down to 10. The poison will bring him down to 9 in a moment. Oh, I forgot. She still has her little uh, coming back to life thing. Oh, and she also has the thing that brings her back to life. So let's like, heal herself. 1d6, 4. So she's back up to 20. I feel like maybe the Seraph will survive even if the thief goes down. She gets a combat point. She gets a card. Um, yeah, we don't have time for upgrades. So let's sell that for one. And I guess might as well pay one to draw two new cards so I at least have some options, maybe. Okay, another one I can't... Oh, man, they're both upgrades? Well, I guess I'll hang on to them for now. Right, give me some big money. Oh, my gosh. Yes, I like that already. Come on. No, one more chance, one more chance. Hmm, okay, this is bad. I think I might have actually done nothing. <laughs> uh, man, I had an upgrade that would have given me something for uh, three sixes earlier, I think, but well, either way. Darn, I definitely have nothing to change it. Oh my gosh. Yep, all right, so that was a dead roll. Okay, let's see what the guy does in response. Okay, well, his poison brings him down to nine, so even if I can't hurt him, the poison is. And his card. Oh, he gains three PP and draws another card. I guess my hopes of cards not activating was a false one. Black Spring. Don't heal yourself, are you kidding? <laughs> okay, so he rolls five, he heals one plus two times the number of yellows. So, only a single one. That's not too bad. So he heals himself three. 
Cost him four CP. And he's up to 12 life. Not great. And he's going for straights again. Um, oh, gosh. Two, three, four, five. Okay. And uh, I'm going to assume that's bad. So let's go ahead and helping hand that and try to reduce it to a small straight. It cost the Shadow Thief one CP. So I'm going to reroll the six and get the exact same thing anyway. Okay. Right, so let's see. Death Wager. He gains an evasive, which uh, gives him a chance to cancel damage, kind of like my flight. And then he rolls five dice and does a bunch of damage. Okay. okay so let's see. It's three times yellow. So that's 12, 14. Plus um, from his uh, gun, that's 16, 18. Well, hey, surprisingly, with the healing, I can survive this, but let's try to fly anyway. So first token, need that six. Nope. And second token, nope. Okay, so down to two life. Thank God she's got a little get out of jail uh, free token here. Right, both my guys are kind of on death's door. Come on, give me something good. Tip it, increase a die or decrease by one. That's definitely worthwhile. Boss is down to 11. All right, here we go. Okay, do I want to try this again? Uh, I guess I do. I only need one more for Shadow Dance. Okay, so I got that safe. They go for the crazy odds. One and six of getting a six, and then use Tip It. Now, nah, let's see if I... Okay. <laughs> so, I'm doing a Shadow Dance. Gonna deal half a die roll as damage that he can't prevent, so that's definitely good. Oh, gosh. So he's back to the 10 from before he healed. But I do gain shadows, so unless he does something crazy, he can't hurt me again. And I get sneak attack to deal a bunch of damage next time. Okay, he's poisoned down to nine. Please don't cancel my token. Dower Glass 2. Transfer all negative status effects from yourself to the active player. Oh, no. I guess my Shadow Thief is poisoned. Still not as bad as canceling his uh, shadows, though. It cost uh, four CP, though, so he is actually broke. He will not be able to play a card next time. He's going for straight again. And he gets three, four to start. And five, six. Definitely got a small straight. It'll stop there. Okay, and here it doesn't matter. He's just going to deal damage, nothing else. So that's the end of his turn. You know, Seraph is in a weird place because if she deals damage to him, his defensive power will kill her. But she really wants to use this on uh, the the negative effect of his actual attack. So she kind of needs to do... By the way, he's down to 7 from her, uh, her radiance or whatever. She kind of needs to do unblockable damage. Oh, I got him a helping hand card. We're up to a 2 now. So, you know, what the heck? I think I'm going to uh, upgrade Purify just because I can. And I'll sell Angelic Mantle to have enough to uh, pay for Helping Hand. All right. So Purify would be great. That's six undefendable damage. That would mean he's basically dead. I uh, just need two crosses and a shield. Got the two crosses. Let's go for it, right? Second roll. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Come on, come on, come on. Six. Yes! All right. So, we are purifying two. I'm going to choose the enemy. I'm going to do six undefendable damage. And I'm going to remove a status effect from that player. Now, hmm. Here's the question. He's got an evade that could cancel my damage. And this says additionally... What I'm not sure about is, can I remove this status effect before he gets a chance to cancel it? Let's say that I can't, just to kind of be nice to the boss since he will be about to die otherwise. So he's going to get a chance to roll this. On a one or a two, he cancels my damage. Even though it's undefendable, he can still do this. Oh, and he did. Okay, so uh, I'm not sure if I played that right, but for now we'll say I did, and he is not getting hurt by my attack. All right, but he is still coming after me. He uh, draws a card. He can't play it, so he just gains one CP. But the objective still applies. It's a three yellows and a red again. Okay, he's got uh, some of it. I'm still no yellows, and... No, oh, he didn't get it. So we go to the highest priority one of what he uh, could have rolled. So let's see, he's got... 
two yellows and two reds now. Two whites and two reds now. He doesn't have magic bullet. He doesn't have that. Does he have a run? No. Oh, so he's got nothing. Is that right? I don't think I've ever actually gotten this before. Yeah. Wow. So he does use a king's hand here. And if he gets a uh, five or six, he gets to take his whole turn over again and try again. Oh, and he does. Okay, so uh, too good to be true. Um, all right, so he draws a new card. He's going to heal three. No, don't heal three. Oh, my gosh. And uh, he's going to draw another card. That did cost his only CP, by the way. No dower glass, which you can't do, but he's trying to get straights again. All right. So nothing. Uh, one, two is all he got. Wow. Okay, so he did this time get, um, looks like just a regular hot shot is his best. So that's uh, seven damage plus whatever his extra stuff is. And he's going to knock her down. That's not good because he uh, got two of a kind. And she's pretty poor to pay the two CP to cancel that. Okay, so the seven damage gets modified. Uh, 10, 13 damage. Not that she cares much, really. She's just going to, uh, you know, die and kind of get rid of all of it. She does get to use her defense. I really hope she does three damage. Yes. He's down to seven, still just circling the drain and hanging on. All right, so he does a lot of damage, and she goes from two to one. Ha ha, take that. Shadow Thief takes one damage from his own poison, sadly. But he does deal one damage back to the boss, down to six. Come on. And he gets a card. Remove a status effect token from a chosen player. I guess he could do that to himself. And ten. Although, you know, maybe, maybe he wants to do it to the Seraph. Well, we can see how things go first. So he's got a sneak attack to do plus d6 damage. He just needs to hit the guy. All right, so... I mean, I kind of just want to do the poison and the dagger strike. Let's go for it. Okay, I don't need two of those. All right. So that is six damage, and he's poisoning the guy, and he's going to do a backstab to make it nine damage. And the boss's return shot does deal three damage to bring him down to eight. And they roll off to see if it is halved. Oh, man. Could have used Tippet to uh, make me win if it had not been a tie. So nine damage minus five would be four damage. So he's down to two. He's going to take one from the poison. Okay, I mean, I, I think I can't possibly not win unless he just <laughs> does something annoying. Uh, I'm losing my shadow, so he's going to be able to hit me. And he's only got one CP, so hopefully there's nothing crazy he can do. Pistol Whip. Okay, he knocks me down. I don't even care, because hopefully I'm never going to need to take another turn. And he's going for three yellows and a red. That does use up his CP. And when he takes one from the poison, yes. So three yellows and a red. And just a red. Oh, get out of there, Shadow Thief guy. Um, okay, still needs two more yellows. Okay, so what did he get? Oh, it looks like Wanted is the best thing he could do. So he's going to inflict a bounty on the Shadow Thief, then deal three undefendable damage. So bounty means you're uh, taking plus one damage every time he shoots at you, and he gets a CP each time, so he's kind of like put a little bounty on you. So he's getting the CP, and that's bringing it to four undefendable damage, plus his gun roll. Five, six, seven, eight undefendable damage, which is, ah, oh, crap, exactly what the Shadow Thief has left. All right, so let's do a uh, Shadow Thief. Oh, no, that's right, I can't defend, so I just have to use my Flight token. And I've got to tip it, so if I can get a five with either die, then I will not be dead. So let's see how it goes. Ah, oh, no. All right, so sadly, the Shadow Thief is defeated, but it doesn't matter because... The Seraph still has two of these beautiful things, and the Gunslinger has zero life. Take that, you jerk. <laughs> so, uh, one character dead, one character with a single life. Can't get much closer than that. Now, we finish up with our upgrade step. We would uh, do this and go shopping, whether or not we had beaten the boss. Uh, since we uh, did beat the boss, we don't get halved, and we round up to the nearest five. So, we go up to 20 gold. 
And at the end of this mission, each character looks at four common cards and one rare. So let's say this is for my Seraph. And these cards are cool. They're either more powerful versions of cards you already have or completely new cards. And one of the nice things is if you don't need that card, you can discard one of these to redraw. So they never bloat your deck or anything. The Seraph also has her unidentified card that only costs five, and this is level two. So I think what makes the most sense is to buy both the level two. So she's got a link. Uh, for zero CP, you and a chosen teammate each roll one. The player with the highest value draws two cards, while the other player receives two damage. But if we tie, we both draw two cards. Kind of fun. And then, oh, cool, equipment. So if you play this, it's very expensive. It stays next to you. You can have two equipment in play, and it gives you something every turn. So she would gain more flight every single turn. Awesome. As for the Shadow Thief, his four commons and one rare. Let's see, if he bought the Regenerating Orb, he would have five useless gold left, but it gives him a chance to heal every turn. Nah, but only a chance. A Link that costs more. A less expensive buy. A health potion. Oh, that's awesome, especially since he has a lot of CP. So I think he'll buy that for 10. And then... I think maybe the Babai being cheaper would be a good one for him. Now, you can also buy some more salve tokens to give yourself healing in the next mission. But yeah, so we would progress uh, to level 2, fight another boss. If we beat them, we could go to level 3, and then eventually level 4 with the Mad King. Although I've only seen the uh, content up to level 2. But that's Dice Throne Adventures. We barely won. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you at the next stop.